that differ from the previous CAAU case I have attended. So, good plus for you. Uh, unfortunately, I was flown into this first slot from the relative uh, anonymity of the afternoon. So, if I'm a little bit uh, out of place, that's partly because I literally just arrived and my lunch is waiting there and I haven't had a cup of tea or anything. Uh, I'm a one person, I have to mention uh, that the, all this work is done uh, co in collaboration with Phil Mills. So he's as much as uh, I responsible for everything which is said and done here, um, if not more so. And um, this work I will present definitely uh, involves everything which is in the CAA title, that is archaeology, computing uh, and statistical methods. But for most of all, it's a presentation of a theoretical concept which works as a framework for interpretation of field data, in which uh, kind of in uh, uh, the analysis of which uh, GIS is important together with statistical analysis. So uh, I present you Ceramicine, we have been flocking around for a couple of years now, uh, which has uh, uh, born out of uh, Ingold's uh, concept of task scale. I used myself in my prehistoric PhD. Uh, of course, Ingold defined Tarscape as a socially constructed space of human activity understood as having spatial boundaries and delimitations for the purposes of analysis. That's distribution to you and me. And uh, Tarscape as well as landscape is to be considered as perpetually in process rather than in static or otherwise immutable state. And I use this in order to see uh, what kind of kind of landscapes uh, uh, people were using during different periods in central Italy. And uh, when it came to the analysis of Roman pottery, I needed a specialist, uh, specialist and got Phil Mills. And together we developed Tarscape further and uh, suggested that it can be named ceramicine or any scene basically where you stick one uh, 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 group of material into with a <coughs> fancy Latin or Greek name uh, but it's a rural or urban landscape uh, formed by manufacture, use and discard of fired clay object and this is important because most of the material we collect in the Mediterranean and what we have also here uh, in UK is pottery. So uh, analyzing and presenting pottery is basically what many of archaeologists too do. And in order to analyze pottery one can you use uh, many of um, several uh, tools of ceramic analysis which are uh, uh, familiar to most of us, like typological dating, wear and fabric analysis, um, kind of use of um, fine wares in quantitative ways, and functional analysis, which can be used in site characterization. That is basically looking at uh, the different uses of vessels uh, which are involved. And in order to develop ceramicine further, we also uh, involved in the mix the Lynch's uh, theoretical concepts from his 1960 book, The Image of the City, which has been quite popular and fashionable in Roman research. But we basically turned it all upside down. Instead of looking at the city, we look at the countryside. Because basically all his elements are really basic. So you have paths, you have edges, you have districts, you have nodes, and you have landmarks. And all these are basically categories which characterize your 
usual archaeological uh, landscapes. It has a road network in paths, it has edges uh, in different kind of boundaries, it has districts in different distributions, uh, uh, it has um, nodes in sites and landmarks, you have mountains, you have rivers, you have buildings. Uh, so you can characterize all types of landscapes using these three simple concepts. And you can also develop this further using the social uh, theory, which has been attached to uh, Lynch's uh, theories of the um, zoning of the city. Hillier and Hansen have suggested that um, all these elements uh, could be presented hierarchically. And this is really easy with road network and roads. Uh, otherwise as well. So um, these uh, developments actually uh, attach directly to our basic uh, uh, classifying concepts in archaeology when we go about characterizing the landscape. And our site is here in central Italy, north of Rome, about 45 kilometers. The original uh, field work was done in, uh, under the umbrella of a uh, Tiber Valley project as a continuation of the South Etruria survey. It was uh, directed by Simon Stoddard, uh, but I was a field supervisor um, in 1999 and 2000, which feels like uh, prehistory now. And uh, the emphasis was in uh, studying pre-Roman settlement. And by this time, GIS had become more or less standard technique, and this benefited this project as well. And I did my PhD on the pre-Roman material. And as a continuation of this project, uh, there was the analytic phase, the romanization of the Faliscan town, uh, which basically analyzed the Roman pottery, which was coded in 2008. And here you have the area covered in the surveys. Um, it, um, it should be 230, not one. So sorry about that uh, different versions of the presentation around. Here you have the landscape, so you see there are indeed very deep river valleys there, and all the dots on Google, or um, hints on Google map are different sites we found, and just to give you an idea of how it looks like around there, so there is a a uh, large canyon next to a modern town. And these are the Roman sites we defined in the field and um, presented in GIS. And these sites uh, could be defined as nodes of this research, whereas uh, these canyon-like river valleys could be presented as edges and there was clear suburban uh, kind of uh, spread outside the town, so there was suburban area apart from uh, uh, rural area. There, you can define main Roman roads uh, separate from uh, non-paved uh, secondary uh, roads, and you can define certain uh, landmarks. The kind of uh, nodes which are not visited, which only uh, direct your uh, moving around the landscape. And this is uh, the date range of Roman pottery, which is the uh, data set uh, we have used um, in this project. It doesn't really differ from any central Italian data range. It has the peak in uh, 
around Augustan period, and then it goes downhill with occasional peak kind of uh, increases in settlement uh, during the late antique. <coughs> and then um, the traditional uh, distribution maps of the nodes. Here is the second century BC. Uh, the peak of the settlement when uh, you have most um, site type in function. Uh, then um, the slide, uh, we move towards slight decline um, towards the third century AD and the strengthening of Roman villas in the territory and uh, the dichotomy between the villas and the urban center, which is not visible from this distribution map um, uh, during the late antiquity. And this represents um, the material. It's basically <coughs> oxidized pottery with uh, little fine wear, some amphoras, uh, some pre Roman material, and some white wares. And um, but it gets more interesting when one starts to look at different wares by site type. And clearly, certain pottery wares are um, index uh, finds for certain types of sites. You have uh, sigillata mostly in um, uh, villa sites or uh, near uh, the urban center. Mortaria is. Uh, uh, very rare, extremely rare, and found only from urban <coughs> context where you can suggest there were some military presence, and Dolia were only found from farms. So you can use wares um, um, as um, kind of a tool to uh, decide the function of your site. Um, then uh, presenting the wares in the landscape, uh, you use uh, GIS, and then you can see uh, where the uh, where the large villas lie and the more uh, special sites like M2 slash one, which seems to be some kind of ritual site, and here. The different functions of object uh, of uh, pottery vessels uh, or di diagnostic pieces are um, presented, and again uh, the suburban uh, area and large villas, uh, together with the building, which um, mostly is represented by this one exceptional uh, ritual site. Uh, they show most variability, which again can be used as index or site type, and represented as GIS maps, which can be used in um, interpreting the landscape. And again, fine wear and sigillata are used as indicators of uh, certain types of sites, confirming what was uh, 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 decided uh, during the initial analysis and um, kind of on the basis of the uh, size of the sites. And this is uh, the date distribution of Amphora. I talk a little bit uh, <coughs> at this latter part of the talk. You should, you must notice that the uh, date distribution of Ankara is totally different from the general distribution of material. And when other settlements slide, <coughs> the Ankara use actually goes up, which suggests um, that uh, certain parts of Roman economy were functioning uh, quite well indeed. And um, then uh, Kind of more analysis on the basis of uh, different fabrics of uh, the oxidized wares. Uh, I have circled uh, um, two wares, but do notice the um, O51, which is the late Roman <coughs> one, which seems to 
five halves uh, the urban center totally and suggests that um, kind of the suggests the train the strength of the villas uh, during that time because all these sites are villa sites where you have uh, this fabric in on the, this uh, distribution map. So you can use your data in order to uh, see different supply networks. Um, on the basis of all Roman data, we make uh, certain uh, um, interpretation of different districts. Um, uh, this is based basically on the natural landscape and the richness of the finds and the location of different important villa sites, uh, sites uh, together with the, uh, 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 the track of the Via Amerina, which is the major Roman route in this area. But from uh, this uh, definition of districts, which was partly ad hoc, we wanted to go further. And as an example, we took that uh, totally for other reasons than uh, research interest, uh, the interesting period <coughs> we studied, we chose uh, late uh, antique because that was one of the conferences we were heading to. Uh, we have to do uh, the Republican period, which is really supposed to be really interesting in this area, uh, kind of doing the finer analysis of the material. Uh, when we look at boundaries, I just wanted to visualize the importance of these uh, uh, river valleys, these canyons in separating different uh, sites of the territory of Nervi, how they uh, had a crucial effect in uh, uh, kind of circling certain areas and making them natural districts and allowing and is allowing uh, movement between places in the landscape. Uh, naturally one can use uh, peace and polygon as a, a theoretical tool in order to uh, define where the territory of the urban center itself may or may not have been lying and use zoning kind of the standard GIS uh, distance uh, classification tool in order to uh, look at uh, the distance from certain features like the center itself when we are looking at the rural hinterland. Okay, and uh, first in defining boundaries we were we, this is where we development. We are interested in Ankara because they seem to stay in the villa site instead of uh, spreading out from there. So um, they seem to have poor permeability. So we have done some experiments with interpolation in order to visualize how uh, where you have the peaks and where you have. Uh, Lacunae, and then look at the distribution of uh, villas at certain periods. But uh, most of all, for um, uh, late antique, uh, we have looked at three different pottery types: red, African red lid slip, uh, North African alfare, and uh, North African horsewares, and look at the uh, correlations between different geographic landscape attributes and the finding a certain pottery type uh, in the field units. And it turns out that we have three different coro set of correlations, three different distributions. So we have African red slips, which basically cor correlates with distance, but so that most pottery is found near the center itself. Then when we look at a North African amphorae, its uh, distribution um, kind of is connected with uh, flatter areas and um, areas which uh, 
open to certain direction, uh, in this case, should be southeast. Sorry about that, that mishap. And um, also, there is a, um, a negative correlation between uh, distance between the distribution of this pottery wear type and the distance from Nepi, which again suggests that a lot of pottery, a lot of ampere is found near a city itself. That shows you the partly the part that part of the uh, population was concentrated into the center, and the other part was going out to the uh, larger villas in. The, uh, in the landscape. Then North African coursewares has a totally different uh, distribution and these finds are so rare um, it's kind of a little borderline to use them uh, in this way but they kind of seem to be correlated uh, with curvature and suggest uh, locations uh, on convex hillocks or slopes. And when one kind of combines all these three different, let's say, late Roman markers and looks how, how the landscape features uh, correlate with them, uh, again, it, and it's kind of, you get basically your standard Roman location, uh, but it's uh, at least uh, shown that it's uh, backed up by the evidence. So you have most late Roman pottery uh, from um, flatlands opening to southeast near uh, the city of uh, Nepi itself. And then just as a footnote, the Roman uh, road network doesn't seem to have any effect whatsoever. It was only pet present and used by uh, everybody still during the late period. So um, that was uh, our presentation. We suggest that ceramicine allows one to integrate uh, the both methodological and uh, uh, theoretical sides of the research and use um, the Assemblages, material assemblages to the full in interpretation and, uh, and I hope I have shown somehow that we can define a late Roman ceramicine with three different uh, distribution patterns which as a whole uh, define a certain kind of quite uh, normal Roman uh, <coughs> landscape. Uh, we have a lot of people to thank for, for the original research and the pottery analysis, and um, that was it for the first speech.